Hello and welcome to Alistair Davis Golf, or welcome back. Today's video is all about compression, creating that elusive ball and turf contact on the ground. Massive thanks to Almondria Golf Resort here in Portugal for hosting me this week to film my videos. If you get a chance, check it out. A great facility, two great golf courses, and a great practice area. So today's video, all about compression. So what is compression? So really what we're talking about is the compression that the elite players and tour players would create. And it's basically all to do with creating that elusive ball and turf contact. I'm really trying to, what a lot of people term as hitting down on a golf ball with the right loft on the golf club to make that ball flight kind of piercingly go away and go this maximum distance. And what you'll see with a lot of top players is the sound of the strike and the ball flight is different to the amateur golfers. Most of this is to do with the loft they present at contact and also to do with where the weight is on their body at contact, the dynamic balance as we would call it. So what we're looking to do with, with most golf clubs is take loft off them when we hit them. So the tour average for shaft lean, to give you an idea, is 11 degrees of forward lean at contact. Now, if I said to you, most amateur golfers that I would teach would be anything between kind of positive one to two to kind of six or seven. And some very elite golfers I would teach might be about nine to 10. So the tour players just generally have a little bit more in terms of the shaft lean. And they do that by making sure they obviously rotate their body correctly and move the weight correctly through the golf swing, which helps get that compression on the golf ball. So let's talk about that briefly and then we're going to talk about some exercises you can do to create and some concepts you can do to create that elusive strike as well. So as we've already said, we're looking for basically the handle to be forward, we're looking for the hips to be rotated and the trail side of our body to move forward to allow us to create that kind of ball turf contact. Okay, All of our trail side is going to be moving towards target. What would happen in an ideal world from the top of the swing is there'll be kind of a centering of the weight, then the trail side will move forward and push forward as we rotate. So the trail thigh, trail knee would all move towards the golf ball, trail shoulder, torso would be opening, the leg will be opening and the leg will be straightening and everything moves forward and rotates to allow us to retain our wrist conditions as we come down. Now, if I don't rotate, what tends to happen is the speed goes to these beauties first and then these hands want to overtake. So that what will, that's what will happen in terms of the hands. Now what we tend to see with a lot of amateur golfers is they also will be trying to shift, or not trying to shift, they will be shifting their weight towards the trail side like this. A lot of time it's because the plane is coming over and they work to the back foot and they flick the hands in it to make the ball go more left to stop it slicing. But generally speaking, sometimes they just want to get that ball up in the air. And by trying to get the ball up in the air, they get this kind of same conditions and shape rather than getting the weight towards their lead side and posting out like we see all the best golfers in the world. So what we're looking to do really is try and make sure we have a simple concept to help us do that. So what you'll see here on the ground here, I've got a golf ball and a tee peg. And there's two things I want to talk about with this. I've got the stripes of the ball on the front edge of the ball. So I want you to feel you're going to look at the front edge of the ball whilst you're making your swing. That hopefully is going to keep you more centered in your backswing. It's also going to help you feel that like you're going to strike the front of the ball rather than the back of the ball. So instead of trying to get the club to the ball here, we're going to be thinking more of the club going to the ball this way on top of the ball. We still want to do this with a, a successful plane rather than coming over the top to get there. And if you feel you are doing that to get there, you're kind of cheating to get there, by all means, place a ball or a head cover in this area here. So if you come over the top to get there, you will hit the ball or the head cover and it'll give you that vital feedback. So we're not looking to do it that way. We're looking to hit down on the ball in the right direction to create the right power and direction of the shot at the same time. So the second drill, as I said, is the T there. The idea is we're gonna try and focus on trying to take the ball and tee peg with the club in one go. That's going to get us trying to feel that we can extend our low point, get more structure in our arms and move our weight towards target a little bit more. So that will be the key evidence of whether we've done it or not. And this will help us get that compression. OK, so if we're still if we're managing to do this and we're not getting the compression we want, then we've probably got to look a little bit at the wrist conditions. Is the wrist in flexion? or is the wrist extending? So we managed to hit down on the ball. I said maybe cheating by coming across, but not quite getting the right loft in the club, as I said, 
we'd want to de-loft this club by con some considerable kind of 10 to 11 degrees at minimum. You know, it's a six iron I've got here and the average Tor Pro launch for a six iron is 14 degrees. And if I said to you, most of the guys that come in my studio, let's say 18 handicap and above will be probably closer to 20 degrees. So they're adding six degrees of loft compared to the best players at contact. And they're doing that through these two ways I'm talking about today, either through hanging back or and loading those wrists very, very early in the downswing. So we're looking to change that on this drill all in one go. So let's take my setup. So again, I've got six iron here, ball positions fractionally left to center for me. And I've got that T-peg, what must be about two inches, two and a half inches in front of the golf ball there. And the logo of the ball's on the front. So setup wise, I'm gonna set up to it as normal, hands slightly ahead towards my inside, my left thigh. But then I'm gonna do a little rehearsal. So I'm gonna swing back try and feel and maintain my wrist conditions, shift my weight, get that feeling of the hands over the ball. If I want to place the club on the ground, I can do, and then I might push forward. That's the feelings I'm certainly looking to produce on the golf ball when I hit it now. So let's try a shot. And I'm gonna try and take that tee peg out and stare at the front of that golf ball. There we go. So the T-peg disappeared. Bit of a bruising of the grass. I didn't take too much earth with that at all, but I certainly got the compression and the low point I was after. Maybe a little bit more turf would be desirable, but the divot doesn't necessarily mean it's a successful shot. Um, as you can see there, I have my low point far enough forward. Otherwise I wouldn't have hit that T-peg. Sometimes the ball can hit the T-peg, but it wasn't that way in that case. So if you find that particularly hard, the next thing to do with it would be to slow it down, okay? So we might do the same exercise again, but do it at a much slower pace and even a shorter swing. That will help us achieve it and then build back up. So again, if I take my setup, I might now slow it down and do a slower swing. Shorter swing, sorry. So that time, more divot, I'd probably say slightly better strike again than the first one. The first one was pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. But that one was a little bit more ball turf. It got slightly higher up in the face in the golf club. The tee peg disappeared. And it was certainly easier to do in the smaller swing. Nothing wrong with a bit of failure either. If you're missing the tee every single time, you cannot, cannot hit the tee at all. Then by all means, we could try a different drill. We have to find a drill or exercise or concept that really suits your learning style. And there's nothing wrong with that. But failure in practice is good. Failure in practice will make you motivated to do more. At least I hope so, as long as it doesn't become too frustrating, but it will motivate you, it certainly motivates me to practice more and achieve more. So there we have it. How to achieve compression with your irons and that elusive kind of tall player type field strike. Again, de-lofting the club. And again, we can talk about the risk conditions in other videos a bit more, but this was really all about a concept of the front of the ball, the T-peg drill, and making sure we kind of shift forward and extend, if you like, to target to help, help achieve that. Hope you've enjoyed this video on compression and how we get that elusive strike like the tall players. If you have, please click like down below. I really appreciate if you could do that. That really helps my channel grow. Also chat, tell me what videos you want to hear from me in the future. And I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can with a video that's going to be appropriate for you. And also ask any questions you have. Lastly, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I've got regular content coming every week on a variety of subjects. And you'll get all those notifications and videos for free. So, massive thanks to Amandwire Golf Resort once again. Great facility, check it out. And also, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again here soon.